So following through the procedure now to inspect and check running clearance for the end play and the bottom end of the engine, we need to use this dial indicator. We have a magnetic base, we have the apparatus arms on here so that we can adjust it to set it onto the engine, and then we have a dial indicator that can read the value that we're looking for and we will take a look at that in comparison to manufacturer specifications. Now this little box here contains for us a bunch of various lengths and various ends, configuration of ends that will help us do the measurement process. We can adjust all this onto the end of the dial indicator so that we have the correct depth to be able to get into the block or in a, an appropriate position to actually do the end play measurement. The other tool that can be used are feeler gauges. Now feeler gauges uh, they're as accurate as the person that's using them. And again, the term feeler gauge determines the feel of the technician that's actually doing the work. So my 10 thou of clearance may feel tighter or looser to another technician. It all it's all determined by the technician that's actually doing the measurements and the process that he uh, adheres to on every application of using a feeler gauge, whether it's points, top end setting, end thrust setting, cam end float setting, and a bunch of various other ones unmentioned. Okay, so taking the dial indicator magnetic base, putting it in an appropriate position on the block, and then locking the magnet, and then positioning the dial indicator so that we have a positive and negative reading so that I can read exactly what I'm looking to attain, and that's crankshaft end float clearance. So we'll take a look at the measurement that or the clearance that I'm trying to establish in a moment how I'm moving the crankshaft. First thing I want to do is just move it back and forth so that I can make sure that my gauge is zeroed. And if I get my gauge right to zero, okay. Then we're going to move the crank back and forth to determine how much clearance we have. And if I take a look at how far this is moved, because this scale works in one ten thousandths of an inch, or 0 .001 inches, and we're reading just over six, so we have six and two ten thousandths. So we have six thou of end float and two ten thousandths or point zero zero six two inches. Eight. So based on manufacturer specifications we're taking a look at the crankshaft end play or the running clearance that we have for permissible end float. The manufacturer prescribes here that it can be anywhere from six thousandths of an inch to a maximum of twelve thousandths of an inch. So if we fall within that range then we fall within the prescribed end float clearance. And I've already established through the measurement process that we have six and two tenths. And for all intents and purposes, we can call this six thou. And we still have an available five and eight tenths, or roughly another six thou, of permissible amount of wear, so which allows these bearings to slowly wear, increasing crankshaft end float up to a maximum of 12 thousandths of an inch. So when, when engines are manufactured and when engines are rebuilt, we want to try and adhere to the minimum end of the specification to get the minimum running clearance, which provides a lot of longevity up to and hopefully not beyond the maximum specification for that particular measurement. Okay, checking the crankshaft end play, one is as simple as using a screwdriver to push back and forth on the crankshaft. And if you notice, I'm using a bit of finesse. I'm not prying on it. If I pry on it, I can actually make an increased clearance measurement. And I don't want to do that. I just want to read exactly what I have based on crankshaft and float. So now what we're going to do is take a look at the position of the bearing in the engine and how we can actually do a feeler gauge measurement if you do not have a dial indicator. So if we take a look at the bearing itself, we can see the end fl thrust flanges on the split shell bearing, and we can actually see them in position on the engine here and here. So what we want to do with the 
feeler gauges is again move the crankshaft back and then we're going to again move the crankshaft forward so that we have a clearance between the end of the crankshaft and the thrust flange of the bearing. And the manufacturer says 6 to 12 thou and we've established through the dial indicator measurement that we're around six thousandths of an inch. So if I set my feeler gauge at six thou. Okay, so taking a look now with the feeler gauge, we've established that we have six thou of end play running clearance, and we're at about six and two tenths, so just over six thousandths of an inch. So I'm gonna take my feeler gauge, and here's where we drop it down in here, in between the end of the crankshaft and the thrust bearing itself. The gauge that I have in there right now is 6 thou, and it's got a little bit of snugness to it. It's got a decent drag to it, but I'm going to say it's slightly larger than. So we're just going to put a 7 gauge in there and see how it fits, and again, it's very close. So it's a good indication to me that with the dial indicator, that the 6 and 2 tenths of running clearance is, is the most accurate. But this is relative if we do not have the dial indicator to check the end clearance. Okay, taking a look at the crankshaft uh, side clearance, the rod to crankshaft side clearance, the manufacturer's spec is 12 thou plus or minus four and a half thou. So we have a wide range that we can fall within there to have the correct amount of crankshaft side clearance on the connecting rod. So a lot of the times when technicians install bearings, what they're looking for is clearance here at all the connecting rods. And you can hear on this one that we do have clearance. Is what we need to do is measure it to find out if we have the correct amount. Because just seeing that we have some may not fall within permissible values. And the value we looked at, the 12 thou plus or minus four and a half, so we can roughly run anywhere from around eight thou to around 16 thou of clearance. And if I can get it set to where the manufacturer prescribes it as a running nominal of value at 12 thou, that's where I'd like to sit. So if we take the feeler gauge, which is 12 thou, and we move the rod over, and then a little bit of oil, we should be able to slide this down beside the rod. And when it slides down in there and we have no clearance and it's a good feel when we pull it out, then it's a good indication that we have that value based on what the feeler gauge strip indicates. So when it indicates 12 thou, falls right within the spec that I'm looking for, so I can leave it. If it's too tight, the rods need to be machined so they're slightly smaller to increase the clearance. If it's too tight, or pardon me, too small, then we may need to install either a new rod or have the crankshaft machined and an oversized bearing, or pardon me, undersized bearing and a new connecting rod to get and reestablish the running clearance in the engine. We have a 